Hi, this is Colonel Luke Sauter, and I'm here to present the very last topic in Astro 310, interplanetary travel. Okay, without further ado, let's jump into the slides. All right, interplanetary travel. I have an, an analogy here. Let's say we're going to go take a uh, trip to the beach. Sometime this summer, we're going to drive from Colorado all the way to South Carolina. As we drive, we're going to pull up probably a GPS. It's a long trip, so GPS is going to give us a little bit of understanding of where we start from and where we're going to finish. But the big picture is the larger map of where we're going to be going. We're going to be spending a lot of time on the interstate. Just like interplanetary travel, we'll have to keep these three views in mind. First is the big picture. We're going from Colorado to South Carolina. The second part is the destination. How do we leave our house and get on the road? And the third part is how do we go from the interstates and the road to our final destination? And there we go. Okay, but let's let's talk about a little quiz here. I'm sure you all did the reading, so this should go pretty easily. But when you're in the region dominated by the sun, which mu do we use for calculations? And these calculations are for velocity, your specific mechanical energy, and your time of flight. Well, if you're in the region dominated by a sun, that means you're stuck in the sun's gravity well. So you're going to use the mu of the sun. All right, question number two. What the heck is V infinity? Well, V infinity is the hyperbolic excess velocity relative to your planet. We'll explain this. It sounds complicated, but it's really not that bad. Question number three. What is the, uh, what, what is the specific mechanical energy for a hyperbolic trajectory? If you remember way back to the beginning, hyperbolic uh, and, uh, trajectories will have a positive, positive specific mechanical energy. This means that the orbit is actually has enough energy to leave the gravity well. And the specific mechanical energy for a parabolic trajectory is what? Again, hark back to your early astro lessons and for uh, specific mechanical energy, that orbit, a parabolic orbit, will take you right to the very edge of the gravity well and stop. So that energy is going to be equal to zero. And then because we're stopping, our relative velocity at the sphere of influence, SOI, is also zero. Okay. Interplanetary travel, we also call this a patched conic approach. The reason being is because we're going to look at three different orbits. The first orbit is going to be an ellipse. The two other orbits we're going to be looking at are hyperbolas that will be connected to that ellipse. We'll walk through an example at the very end. First, let's talk about the coordinate systems. So we've talked about the Earth-centered inertial coordinate system for most of uh, Astro 310. And we have our primary axis pointing to the first star of Aries. Our equatorial plane is our fundamental plane that we, we deal with. However, when we look at the bigger picture of traveling between planets, we need a different frame. And that's where the heliocentric elliptical coordinate frame comes into play. So again, the primary axis still points to that first star of Aries. However, the fundamental plane is going to be the plane of eclipses. That's the plane where Earth rides and the rest of the planets generally ride. So that's the heliocentric center. So it's centered on the sun, heliocentric elliptical coordinate system. Okay. When, in our example, we're going to go to Mars. When we get to Mars, we're going to have to use a Martian coordinate frame as well. So we'll keep our fundamental axes pointed to the first star of Aries. We'll use the Martian equatorial plane as our equatorial plane, and we will build our orbits around that um, coordinate system. Okay. 
So how do we solve these problems? Very first thing we do is draw a picture. So here I've got Earth in a nice circular orbit around the sun. I've got Mars in a little bit larger circular orbit around the sun. And I've got a notional tr transfer orbit between Earth to Mars. So if we're gonna be tra traveling uh, from one orbit to another orbit, easiest, most fuel efficient way to do that is with a home and transfer. We've talked about home and transfers quite a bit earlier in the in the, the, the class, and actually you covered a lot of this in GR2. It's gonna be exactly the same here. All right, so we're gonna start our travels by doing a burn from Earth's orbit, gonna take us on an elliptical orbit about the sun to Mar the Martian orbit. Okay. Now, this problem is actually a lot harder to solve so we're going to make some simplifications. Rather than try to figure out the exact dynamics between four different uh, bodies, essentially your satellite, the sun, the earth, and Mars, we're gonna treat each of them as just four, uh, three separate two-body problems. So we'll have the satellite and earth, the satellite about the sun, and the satellite about Mars. And here we go. We can see what those orbits are going to look like. So first off, we will start all calculations in the heliocentric frame. We'll then move into what does it take to get into that orbit leaving from Earth? So you'll see in the middle there, I've got Earth, and I've got a small orbit about Earth. We're going to depart that orbit on a hyperbolic orbit to get us away from Earth and out about the sun. And... When we get to Mars, we will could be coming in on a hyperbolic orbit. We'll have to slow down and enter a circular orbit about Mars. We're going to treat each of these three different problems as unique individual problems. We're going to patch the conic sections, the orbits, for each of those together at the sphere of influence of each of those planets. Okay, so let's jump into a Mars example. We're going to do it conceptually first, and then in the next video, we'll, we'll dive into the math. Okay, so the first one, let's talk about the sun-centered transfer. So part one, how do we solve this? It's no different than a home and transfer. First thing we do is, oh, then we're going to jump into the Earth-centered departure next followed by the Mars-centered arrival. Okay, so back to the sun center frame. First thing we do, find our details of our transfer orbit. So find the semi-matrix of our transfer orbit by taking the radius to Earth from the, uh, from the sun to Earth and the radius from the sun to Mars. Add those together, divide by two. Okay, we're gonna find the energy of our transfer orbit. We expect that energy to be negative relative to the sun. And again, remember, we're using mu of the sun in these calculations. To start out with, we are traveling on Earth. And our satellite is, even though it's in orbit about Earth, it is traveling with Earth. So we should find the velocity of Earth in a circular orbit about the sun. So use our velocity equations for a circular orbit to find the velocity of Earth. Once we have that, we find the velocity needed for our transfer orbit at the radius of Earth, so at that perigee point of our transfer orbit. Once we have the two of those, we simply subtract them. That difference in velocities between what we're traveling on and what we need to travel on to get to Mars is going to be called v infinity. Normally in a home and transfer we call that our delta v. Here we're not actually going to be doing a burn so we'll call it v infinity. This is the excess velocity we need when we leave earth. Okay now over some time earth will have moved and hopefully Mars, we plan this right so that Mars arrives right when we arrive. Okay we'll have to do the second set of home and transfer calculations 
for Mars now at this point. So number six, best thing to do, find the velocity of Mars about the sun. Again, Mars is relatively in a circular orbit, so we'll use our um, circular orbit velocity equations to find Mars. We use our regular velocity equations to find what the transfer velocity would look like on that ellipse, that, that transfer ellipse. And again, this is using the radius from the sun out to Mars as that position. And we're using the specific mechanical energy of Mars of the transfer orbit on, um, on this trajectory. Subtract the velocity of Mars and the velocity of our transfer orbit at Mars to get our V infinity at Mars. Again, if this was just a Hohmann transfer, that would be our delta V2. But here, since we're not doing a burn, we'll call it V infinity. Okay, great. Now, I have V infinity for Earth. Remember, this is the velocity that I need when I leave the sphere of influence such that I can travel on an elliptical orbit all the way to Mars. So I'm gonna say that that V infinity is the velocity right at Earth. Okay. And then I'm going to essentially back up what I need in terms of velocity to leave a parking orbit about Earth. So first thing we do, we find the specific mechanical energy at Earth, at that sphere of influence for a hyperbolic trajectory. Then I'm gonna back that up because now I know what the energy of the orbit looks like to what is the velocity I need to be leaving on to get on that hyperbolic orbit. And I'm gonna compare that to the velocity that I'm currently on in a circular orbit about Earth. So here we see the two different velocities. And in this case, I will have to do a delta V. I'm currently in the parking orbit. I'm gonna to have to burn my engines such that I can get to the hyperbolic escape velocity. Once I do that, my satellite will be traveling on a hyperbolic orbit with respect to Earth. It will reach the sphere of influence, the edge of Earth's gravity, and be traveling at V infinity away from Earth. That will take me all the way to Mars. We call that delta V that we found, delta V boost. Okay, now we'll look at the arrival scenario. This is very similar to our departure scenario. We are gonna be arriving at delta V infinity at Mars. So this is the velocity that we expect to be at when we reach the sphere of influence. Now this is going much faster than we, we need to stay in orbit. In fact, it's a hyperbolic orbit. So let's back out what that specific mechanical energy looks like for V infinity at Mars. Once we know what that specific mechanical energy is, we can figure out how much velocity we're gonna arrive at, or how much velocity we'll have when we reach perigee, basically the, the altitude at which we wanna slow down and enter a circular orbit. So the next thing we need is another velocity. We need to figure out what the velocity is for a circular orbit that we want to be in. Finding these two velocities allows us to find another delta V. This is the delta V that we're going to use to slow down to enter into a circular orbit at Mars. We'll call this delta V, delta V retro. Okay, so here we go. We're gonna have a delta V boost. So one, one delta V that will take us from a circular parking orbit at Earth into a hyperbolic orbit that will eventually leave Earth and then allow us to travel on an elliptical orbit about the sun till we reach Mars. At Mars, we'll be on a hyperbolic orbit compared to, to the Martian uh, reference system. We will then slow down from that hyperbolic orbit into a circular orbit about Mars. So that delta V boost and delta V retro, we'll add those together, and that's gonna be the total delta V for our mission. Just like a home and transfer, we're only gonna have two 
burns to, per, uh, to perform this maneuver. The reason I move those around is essentially how you solve the problem. First thing you do is you focus on the sun-centered frame. Solve for our elliptical orbit first. Then you'll solve for the departure orbit from Earth, and then after that, the arrival orbit at Mars. You need to solve for the elliptical orbit first to find the delta V infinities at both Earth and Mars. So here we are, we've got all the different orbits that we're going to see. So we're gonna be dealing with circles, a hyperbola, an ellipse, a hyperbola, and then another circle. So you get to see quite a few orbits, lots of calculations. Okay, that is it conceptually. From here, we're gonna go on and actually work a problem. That will be the next video. Thank you for your time. Enjoy. Hi, this is Colonel Sauter again. We're going to go through an example problem for an interplanetary trip from Earth out to Mars. In this case, we're going to go see if we can rescue Matt Damon again from Mars. Okay. As we talked about in the lesson, the Prob interplanetary travel can be broken up into three parts. The first part is a trip about the sun. The second part is the departure from Earth into that interplanetary travel. And then the third part being the arrival at Mars. So let's draw some pictures. First, let's draw what it looks like for an interplanetary trip about the sun. So this is the heliocentric frame. We're going to draw the sun right here. We'll draw um, Earth's orbit going about the sun. Nice circle there. And then Mars's orbit a little bit wider right about there. All right. So now we will start at Earth. I'll just draw a little piece right there. And we'll draw Mars out here. And as we talked about in interplanetary travel, we're going to treat the trip the, uh, about the sun as a home and transfer. So we're going to de depart Earth at the perigee point of the elliptic orbit and then head out to Mars at its apogee right there. OK. So that is the frame and the picture that we're going to use for our calculations here. Now, we've given you some constants to work with. Um, the distance from Earth out to the Sun and then from the Sun out to Mars. We've given you the parking orbits that we want to use at either planet and the gravitational parameters about each of the bodies that we're going to use. I didn't give you Earth's because we've got that all memorized from the equation sheet as well. All right, on a test, we're going to have to give you some of these gravitational parameters for any of the other planets that we're going to be asking you to go to. So the first part, let's calculate what the size and shape of this transfer orbit looks like about the sun. So to find the size of a transfer orbit, we are going to calculate the radius from the center of the sun out to Earth and add that to the radius from the center of the sun out to Mars and divide by two. And here we find that that value for our transfer orbit is 1.888 times 10 to the eighth kilometers. That's a pretty good distance out there. Okay. Now, once we have the, the size of our orbit, we can find its specific mechanical energy. Because again, this transfer orbit is about the sun, we use minus mu of the sun. And that sun is denoted with a circle with a dot in the middle. That's the ancient Greek symbol for the sun. We'll divide that by two times the semi-major axis. 
After doing that, we find that the value is equal to 351.43 kilometers squared per second. All right, now that we have the size and shape of our transfer orbit, we can treat this just like our home end transfer. And to do that, we need to start looking at the velocities. So first thing we need to do is find the velocity that we're currently traveling on in Earth. And we do that with the square root of mu over r, in this case, mu being mu of the sun, and r being the distance from the center of the sun out to Earth. And we find that we're traveling at 29.783 kilometers per second. That's pretty darn fast. So we move around the sun. But we need to go just a bit faster to get into this transfer orbit to leave Earth. So let's calculate what that new velocity is going to be. We do that with our standard velocity equation. Again, because we're uh, going in orbit about the sun, we're going to use mu of the sun. The r we're starting with is the r of our current position, which is at Earth. And then this, me, uh, this um, specific mechanical energy is that of our transfer orbit. And in this case, we find that we need to be traveling on at 32.729 kilometers per second. Now, just like I did with the Hohmann transfer, if I subtract those two, I can figure out what that difference in velocity is. In this case, we're going to call that difference in velocity not a delta V, but our V infinity, our V infinity at Earth's orbit. So in this case, our uh, V infinity, oh, see, it's the right color there, our V infinity is going to be equal to 2.946 kilometers per second. All right. So now we found the first part, and we, we know that we need to be traveling in excess of the Earth's velocity to start on this transfer orbit out to Mars. When we get to Mars, we're going to arrive with some velocity. This velocity is going to be probably a little bit smaller than Mars because our orbit is smaller than Mars's orbit. And so we will use that to calculate what our velocity of our transfer orbit looks like at the transfer orbit's apogee as we approach Mars. So again, we use our velocity equation, mu of the sun still, and r of Mars, and the energy of our transfer orbit. Doing that, we find that we will be traveling at 21.475 kilometers per second when we get to Mars. However, Mars is going a little bit faster than we are. So we'll calculate what the velocity difference is at Mars. And that velocity of Mars it's equal to the square root of mu over r again, but in this case, mu of the sun, r of Mars. Find that Mars is traveling at 24.125 kilometers per second. This gives us a V infinity, an excess velocity, when we reach Mars, equal to 2.65 kilometers per second. Okay. Now that we've got those pieces, the Hohmann transfer is essentially complete. We can start looking at each of the other coordinate frames. This is where we're going to patch a couple of different conic sections together. Now, like we talked about in class, in the Earth frame, that's our departure frame, we're going to be starting in a circular orbit about Earth. I'll draw that here. 
and we are going to travel out to the sphere of influence. Oops. We're going to travel out to the sphere of influence here. Some great distance away from Earth. And we're going to be using a hyperbolic transfer orbit. So a hyperbola with the perigee point starting at our orbit and then going off out to infinity there. Now this velocity, when we reach the sphere of influence, label that SOI, sphere of influence, will be our V infinity. Now, how do we find our velocity or the energy or any idea of the shape of that thing? Well, we're going to go back to our velocity equation. We know that velocity is equal to the square root of 2 times mu over r plus our specific mechanical energy. In this case, this is going to be E infinity. R, that's our distance from Earth out to the sphere of influence, is going to be R approaching infinity. That's very far away. And this mu is our mu about Earth. So if I've got a, a number, a mu, that's divided by a really large number that's approaching infinity, I know that this is going to go to zero. So that term will go to zero. And all we're left with is that V infinity, put the infinity there, is going to be equal to the square root of 2 times our energy at infinity. Now, we have a V infinity. We can just solve for what E infinity is from there. And we get our equation for the hyperbolic specific mechanical energy. And that turns out to be equal to 4.340 kilometers squared per second squared. Okay, so 4.34. We learned earlier. Early on that with our orbits, a positive number for energy means that it's definitely not a circle or an ellipse. Because it's greater than zero, we know it's going to escape Earth's gravity well. And because it's not zero, it's not a parabola. So 4.34 is what we would expect for a hyperbola. So that's, a, that's an orbit that's going to take us forever away. Okay. Now, let's figure out what velocity we're currently in in our um, parking orbit. So velocity in our parking orbit, we'll assume it's a circular orbit. And again, we said that our parking orbit was going to be at 7,000 kilometers above, um, from the center of Earth. So using now Earth's mu and that 7,000 kilometers, we find that our parking orbit velocity is going to be equal to 7.546 kilometers per second. Okay, so standard circular orbit in low Earth orbit. Now, let's see what velocity we need to achieve to get all the way out on this hyperbolic orbit at, uh, at that same point. So we'll use our velocity equation. In this case, we'll use the energy at infinity that we just found. We'll use mu of the Earth and our radius of our parking orbit, since that's where we're going to be departing from. And we find that the velocity we need to be traveling on is 11.071 kilometers per second. That's screaming fast. Subtracting the two together, we are going to get that our delta V, this is, the, this is an actual delta V, is going to be 
five to five kilometers per second. So we need to burn our rocket engines to get 3.525 kilometers per second faster to, to boost out of Earth's orbit. All right. So that's the that's the second part of the problem. First part was the home and transfer. The second part was the velocity that we need to actually get us out to the sphere of influence and give us an excess velocity as we leave the sphere of influence equal to what we, what we would normally need to travel from Earth out to Mars. Okay, so we're going to assume we're going to do that over time. And speaking of over time, we're probably going to have some time of flight. So how do we calculate the time of flight? Well, in this case, we'll skip the time it takes to get from Earth out and from Mars back into a parking orbit and only look at it from the sun's frame, since we're going to spend most of the time out in the sun. So how do we calculate a time of flight for a home and transfer? Well, easy enough, we use the period equation and divide that by two. So the period of an elliptical orbit divided by two is our time of flight. So time of flight is going to be equal to going to be equal to pi times the square root of a transfer cubed divided by mu, in this case, mu of the sun. And I'll leave that for you to figure out what that time of flight for this transfer would look like. And don't be surprised if you get a very, very large number. Remember, that's going to give it to you in seconds. All right. So let's draw the picture of what it's going to look like for our arrival at Mars. First off, we're going to be arriving at Mars right here. We're going to be shooting for a circular orbit at Mars. And we're going to have some Martian influence. Essentially, this is the gravity well that's caused by Mars. And our transfer orbit is going to come screaming in and go right to our perigee point. Okay. So in the Martian frame, this again looks like a hyperbolic orbit coming into to Mars. Again, we'll have some V infinity. In this case, we're not going as fast as Mars, but it'll still be a difference in the velocity at which Mars is traveling. So looking at this, our specific mechanical energy for our V infinity at Mars is going to be equal to 3.511 kilometers squared per second squared. Okay. Okay. The parking orbit around Mars will have some velocity. This is the velocity we want to get into such that we can stay in orbit about Mars. In this case, we're going to just use square root of mu over r again. This, and for this mu, it's going to be mu of Mars. The r in this case will be r of our parking orbit at Mars which in this case is 3,580 kilometers. Now that's, if that was around Earth, it would be well inside Earth's crust, but Mars is much, much smaller than Earth. So that's still going to be a good low Earth orbit around, or low Martian orbit. Okay. So doing the calculation, we get that the parking orbit velocity is going to be equal to 3.453 kilometers per second. Okay. And we'll need to also compare that to the velocity of the hyperbolic orbit as we arrive. In this case, We'll come screaming in because it's a hyperbolic orbit. If we do nothing else, we'll come screaming back out of the Mars sphere of influence. 
So we're going to need to slow down. We're going to fire our, our rockets to give us a retro boost to slow down. The velocity we will arrive at, the, at that altitude with is going to be equal to 5.5. 6 kilometers per second. Okay. Now, subtracting those two velocities, I get that my hyperbolic or my my delta v retro, so how much burn I need to perform on my rockets to slow down is going to be equal to 2.103 kilometers per second. So now we need to find what our delta V mission, mission is. And we'll just simply add our delta V retro to our delta V boost. In this case, we find that it is 2.103 plus 2.65 and all right the last thing we need to do is to calculate our delta v mission delta v mission is found by adding our delta v retro to our delta v boost in this case it's the 2.103 kilometers per second and we're just going to add that to the 3.525 kilometers per second for the boost to get 5.628 kilometers per second. This is going to be our total delta V that we need to carry with us to go from Earth out to Mars. All right, I hope that's been informative and instructive. Please feel free to reference this um, for any future questions about interplanetary travel.